this video lecture we are going to understand portal entries of pathogens into host we know that pathogens means what the disease causing organism and the disease causing organism will enter inside the host by many ways now a portal entry is the site through which microorganisms enter the susceptible host and cause disease or infection now see what is meaning of portal entry so portal entry means what it is a site through which microorganisms or pathogens will enter inside the susceptible host and they will cause the disease or infection infectious agent enter the body through various portal entry such as mucous membrane skin respiratory and gastrointestinal tract now see these infectious agents mean the pathogens will enter inside the human body by many ways for example mucous membrane skin and the respiratory gastrointestinal tracts pathogens often enter the body of the host through the same route they ex exited the reservoir for example airborne pathogens from one person sneeze can enter through the nose of another person the skin normally serves as a barrier to infection now this is a very important point that skin normally serves as a barrier to infection however any break in the skin invites the entrance of pathogen such as tubes placed in body cavities or punctures produced by invasive producers that is next point colonization of pathogens now here we are going to understand how pathogens will do their colonization inside the host now infection begins when an organism successfully colonizes by entering the body growing and multiplying from there now see when infection occurs so important point is that when microorganisms or any pathogens enter inside the body after entering they will they will do or they will do growth of their own and after do, while doing growth they will multiply from there now once they grow very well once they multiply in in that body or in that site then there is a infection most humans are not easily infected those who are very weak sick malnourished who have like have cancer or diabetic possess and increased susceptibility to chronic or persistent infections now we know that the immune system or immunity system of each and every person is different from each other and like human anatomy or human physiology is different from one another that's what the infection or the pathogen ability to depends on that individuals who have suppressed immune system are particularly susceptible to opportunistic infections entrance to the host generally occurs through the mucosa in orifice like the oral cavity nose eye genitalia anus or open wounds now see this very important point that the en the entrance to the host generally occurs through the mucosa of orifice now the mucosa of orifice means what they like oral cavity nose eye genitalia anus or open wounds while a few organisms can grow at the initial site of entry many migrate and cause systematic infection in different organisms sometimes what happens the microorganisms will enter inside the body through the portal entries for example skin or mucous membrane but many times they do their growth at the site of portal entry for example if, if any pathogen is coming through the skin then they will do their growth at the skin only some pathogens grow within the host cells whereas other grows freely in bodily fluids now here this is very important point that some pathogens will grow within the host cells now we know that our body is multicellular means we have millions of cells in our body so any pathogens will do their growth at single cell but sometimes many pathogens will grow freely in the body fluids some island bacteria produce special proteins that allow them to colonize parts of the host body helicobacter pylori is able to survive in the acidic environment of the human stomach by producing enzyme urease now this is one of the example of helicobacter pylori now this is the bacteria which survives as acidic environment in the human stomach now we know that human stomach is so much acidic in nature because of uh, hcl and because of many acids and the acidic enzymes such as urease but during this environment or in this acidic environment the bacteria helicobacter pylori 
will grow and will cause a disease colonization of the stomach lining by this bacterium can lead to gastric ulcer and cancer now see this helicobacter pylori causes gastric ulcer or cancer in the stomach the virulence of various strains of helicobacter pylori tends to correlate with level of production of ureas one colonization refers to non replicating microorganisms within the wound while in infected wounds replicating organisms exist and tissue is injured all multicellular organisms are colonized to some degree by extrinsic organisms and the vast majority of these exist in either a mutualistic or common relationship with the host now we know that we have organisms in our body we have different types of organisms in our body means pathogens but we have like a mutualistic understanding with them so our body what our body is doing our body is like playing with them with the microorganisms in a mutual understanding that's why we are not getting any type of disease in daily life but sometimes what happens sometimes our body environment means temperature ph and the other environments will change and due to the change of such environments this opportunistic infection will occur in our body an example of the former is the anaerobic bacteria species which colonizes the mammalian colon an example of the latter is various species of staphylococcus that exist on human skin neither of these colonization are considered infections now there are some examples for example that anaerobic bacteria species which colonizes mammalian colon now we know that in our colon like we have anaerobic bacteria the latter the another species of staphylococcus that exist in the human skin now on our skin we have staphylococcus bacteria but these all bacteria are staying with us in a mutualistic understanding the next point is the pathogenicity islands and virulence factors now let's see what it is pathogenicity islands means pias are a distinct class of genomic islands acquired by microorganisms through horizontal gene transfer now we know that what is horizontal gene transfer now this is one type of reproduction now here now the, during the horizontal uh, gene transfer the microorganisms will acquire the genomic islands they are incorporated in the genome of pathogenic organisms but are usually absent from those non pathogenic organisms of the same or close related species these mobile genetic elements may range range from 10 to 200 kb and may encode genes contributing to the virulence of the respective pathogens now these islands are nothing but the mobile genetic elements now mobile genetic elements are ranges from 10 to 200 kb and they are mainly encode genes contributing to the virulence factor typical examples are the adherence factors toxins iron uptake systems invasion factors and secretion systems now the examples of uh, islands are like adhesion factors toxins iron uptake system invasion factors and secretion system now these all factors are important as a virulence factor for the pathogen when they when pathogen is coming inside the host and they want to establish their whole system inside the host that time these all factors are required pathogenicity islands are discrete genetic units flanked by direct repeats in such a sequences or trna genes which act as sites for recombination into the dna now cryptic mobility genes may also be present indicating the prevalence of transduction now here one species of bacteria may have more than one pi okay so that this one island pathogenicity islands are very important in pathogens pathogen should have this pathogenic island because of that they will do their virulence factor very clearly and they will establish them themselves in the host as a pathogen so this pi factor should be present in each and every bacteria pi the pais are transferred through horizontal gene transfer events such as transfer by plasmid phase or conjugate to transposon now see sometimes what happens sometimes the bacteria don't have this this factor that is pai factor that time this factor is transferred through one bacteria to another 
by the horizontal gene transfer mechanism. This PIS carries genes encoding one or more virulence factors including but not limited to adhesin, toxins or invasions. They may be located on a bacterial chromosome or may be transferred within the plasmid. Now this, um, this PAI gene encodes for the virulence factor. Now we have to remember that we have to keep in mind that PI genes means what or pathogenicity island means what. These are the nothing but the uh, virulence factors. Okay, and the PAI genes mainly encodes for the virulence factors, but it is not limited to adhesion, toxins, or invasions. They may be located on bacterial chromosome or may be transferred within the plasmid. The GC content of pathogenicity islands often differs from that of the rest of the genome, potentially aiding in the detection within a genomic DNA sequence. Now next point adherence. Now we are going to see what is adherence. Now here adhesins are cell surface components or appendages of bacteria that facilitate bacterial adhesion to the other cells or to inanimate surfaces. Now simply adhesins means what? The adhesins means it is a cell surface component. Now this is cell surface and they may be present around the cell. So this is nothing but the, the cell surface components or appendages of bacteria that facilitates bacterial adhesion to the other cells so with the help of these adhesins the bacteria one bacterial cell will attach to the other type of bacterial cells adhesins are cell surface components or appendages to facilitate the adhesion surfaces adhesins are a type of virulence factor adherence is an essential step in bacterial pathogenesis or infection required for colonizing a new host now see here adhesin it is a one type of virulence factor means what see adherence already i told you adherence or adhesins are present on the bacterial cell surface and it it helps to attach bacterial surface bacterial cell to the host and it is a virulence factor with the help of this adhesins the bacterial cell one bacterial cell or the pathogen will attach to the host for example non typeable hemophilus hemophilus influenza hemophilus influenza expresses the adhesin H E I A H A HAP OP and a hemoglutin pili. Now see they have given example hemophilus influenza. Now on the body surface of hemophilus influenza there is a presence of this high and op and a hemoglutinin pili. These body surface these uh, ex body surfaces are present. Fimbri are fine filamentous of protein just uh, 3 to 10 nanometers in diameter up to several micrometers in length. Now the fimbri is one type of ad adhesin present in the bacterial cell and it is a filamentous protein and which is 3 to 10 nanometer in nature. Okay. They are distributed over the surface of the cell and resemble fine hairs when seen under the electron microscope. As I told you the this adherence or the fimbri are present on the cell surface and it resembles like fine hairs. It resembles like a fine hairs when we see under electron microscope. Most fimbri are gram negative bacteria uh, and functions as adhesins, but in many cases the actual adhesion is a minor subunit protein at the tip of the fimbri. In gram positive bacteria, a protein or polysaccharide surface layer serves as a specific adhesin. To effectively achieve adherence to host surfaces, many bacteria produce multiple adherence factors called adhesin. So adhesin means what? It is simply, simply it is a surface a surface component with a cell surface component or it is called appendix of bacteria which is present on the cell surface and these adhesins will help to attach to the host cell and it also provides a virulence factor to the bacteria. Thanks a lot.